Gerald Firestein, who is a senior fellow at the director at the Center for Gulf Affairs uh, in the Middle East Institute, Institute, a nonprofit think tank and cultural center here in Washington. Quite the title, but really <laughs> appreciate you being with <laughs> us. Thank you for that. You. So uh, we were just talking about this New York Times mm -hmm. op-ed article saying that this is not a break in the status quo, that this is essentially a natural culmination of decades of American policy. How do you mm -hmm. see this proposal? Well, I understand uh, uh, Nathan's argument, and our own uh, our own colleague Khalid Al Gindi wrote a similar. Uh, book uh, called Blind Spot, in which he lays out many of the same issues that Nathan talks about, and so you can say that uh, that many of the elements of the Trump policy are steps that that follow along a particular path, but it's a path that really breaks with many of the other aspects that have guided U.S. policy as well as international policy, uh, really for the past 50 years. The conversation here in Washington continues to be centered around impeachment. There really aren't any networks that have been talking or taking this serious, this proposal seriously at all. That may be for political reasons. Um, but is what President Trump has proposed, is that really any different than what we would see any other sort of uh, Democratic or Republican uh, candidate proposing in terms of we have a 2020 election coming around the corner. Bernie Sanders have, has been putting quite a bit yes. of, of work into that. Um, where Where's the divide? Well, I think that if you go back and you look at the, at the beginnings of the Trump policy, so it's issues like the recognition of Jerusalem as the undivided capital of Israel, which is a break from, uh, from a longstanding U.S. policy, both Republican and Democratic. It's the uh, recognition of Israel's annexation, of, first of the Golan Heights, and now, apparently, of uh, the Jordan Valley, uh, that is a break with longstanding U.S. policy and also a violation of existing international law and, uh, and relevant U.N. Security Council resolutions. Uh, it is the uh, position on refugees, which is a break uh, from what has been the longstanding uh, U.S. position on the right of return in the negotiation. And overall, it is this idea that the United States is interposing itself uh, in a process, negotiating only with the Israeli side, leaving the Palestinians out, uh, and uh, putting forward a proposal that clearly is uh, tilted only towards the Israeli side. Given the history of negotiations that we've seen um, when the U.S. was trying to be an honest mediator and, and broker in a possible two-state solution with Israel and Palestine. Mm -hmm. I guess, why did this administration think, even if the deal was political in itself, that they could, that, that the Palestinians would even remotely accept some of the terms of this? I, I guess I'm trying to, what I'm trying to ask is, mm -hmm. where did John Kerry fail in his negotiations? And why did this administration think that, that there would be items that the Palestinians would take seriously or that could even be a jumping off point for negotiations? Well, I think that, that John Kerry uh, gave it his best effort. Uh, the, uh, the political alignment in the region was not favorable. Uh, one has to say that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu uh, was not uh, a, a true partner. He was not interested in really following through. He was more interested in appealing to his own extreme right wing in order to protect his political position. Uh, the Palestinian Authority was weak uh, and uh, really not able to, to come forward. Uh, and uh, so you now have a, uh, an administration in, in the White House uh, that believes that rather than trying to negotiate, rather than trying to, uh, to meet uh, the needs and aspirations of the two people, uh, that they uh, might succeed by bludgeoning the Palestinians into accepting this extremely uneven uh, uh, proposal. And as we see, uh, the Palestinians have already gone straight to the United Nations with this. Um, really great to have you with us, uh, Gerald Firestein. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure.